good evening all welcome to this new session we will try to discuss uh, unique entities in radiology we will try to see seven unique entities in radiology coming to the first case you can see uh, there is diffuse paraceptal emphysematous changes in the upper lobes and also you can see uap pattern in the lower lobes where you can see fibrosis with honeycombing in the lower lobes so this was a smoker presenting with cough and breathlessness so whenever you see emphysematous changes in upper lobes with honey uap pattern or honeycombing pattern with fibrosis in the lower lobes definitely suspect combined pulmonary fibrosis and emphysema so what is this entity called combined pulmonary fibrosis or emphysema or cpfe so we'll try to see two different cases this is the first case you can, you can see there is paraceptal emphysematous changes in the upper lobes and also uap pattern in the right middle lobe left lingular segment and in bilateral lower lobes so this is one case and this is the other case of CPFE where you can see uh, centrilobular emphysematous changes in the upper lobes and also UAP pattern in the right lower lobe. Here clearly you can see there is UAP pattern in the right lower lobe. So these are both these cases are CPFE. So in CPFE you can have centri centrilobular emphysematous changes or paraceptal emphysematous changes in the upper lobes and UAP or NACP patterns in the other parts of the lungs especially in the middle and lower lobes. So this is a these are both the case of CPFE. Thanks to Dr. Tamim Bhatt sir, who is one of the best in teaching HRCT in lung. Uh, I will try to introduce his cases in the uh, in my subsequent lectures. Next, so combined pulmonary fibrosis and emphysema. Uh, this is commonly seen in smoke, uh, smokers uh, with history of COPD. Uh, so these are commonly misdiagnosed as COPD. HRCT is the best modality for diagnosing uh, CPFE changes, and uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension is very high in CPFE. And uh, along with pulmonary arterial hypertension, lung cancers and even lung injuries are common. So remember, combined pulmonary fibrosis and emphysema. Next case, you can see this is a young male presenting with uh, swelling in the arm. You can see there is a well circumscribed lesion in the subcutaneous plane. The lesion is iso intense to muzzle on T1 weighted images, hyper intense on star and star weighted ima star images, and also showing avid enhancement on post contrast sequences. So this uh, whenever you see well-defined circumscribed lesions, encapsulated lesions in the subcutaneous plane with uh, iso intense to the muzzle, no infiltration to the deep muzzle tissues, hyper intense on T2 and star, showing avid enhancement and sometimes you can see feeding vessels like this into the extending into the lesion definitely suspect dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans so what is this called dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans or dfsp which is very uncommon lesion i have already discussed the imaging findings common differentials can be soft tissue neoplasms metastasial lymphoma local recurrence is very high after excision one of the variant is fibrosarcomatous variant of dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans which is aggressive and has a higher tendency of recurrence these uh, more rarely metastases, but metastases, if they metastasize, they can metastasize to lungs more than lymph nodes. So remember dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. Next case, uh, this is a um, pregnant patient came, came for routine antenatal screening. You can see the placenta is thickened with multiple cystic spaces. So here also you can see the placenta is enlarged in size, placentomegaly is there and along with multiple cystic spaces and you can also see a fetus. So when and whenever you see a imaging features like this, definitely suspect two, two entities should be suspected. One is placental mesenchymal dysplasia, other one is complete identiform mole with coexistent fetus. So what is this placental mesenchymal dysplasia? This placental mesenchymal dysplasia is a very benign, a rare benign condition where you have multiple bunch of grape-like vesicles which resembles molar pregnancy. Associations can be fetal liver cyst or vascular malformations and even beckwith Whitman syndrome. So the placenta will be thickened with multiple cystic spaces. They may show vascularity or may not show vascularity. Most common differentials can be considered are hydropic degeneration of placenta, completed hydratiform mole, with coexistent fetus, chorioangioma, subchorionic hematoma, and even placental infarcts are spontaneous abortion with hydrophobic changes. MRA helps in differentiating PMD from CHMCF because PMD will be presenting as multiple cystic lesions in the placenta, whereas CHMCF will present as multiple cystic lesions located within an extra fetal sac other than the placenta. So remember placental mesenchymal dysplasia. Thanks to Dr. Srivastava sir for contributing this case. Next case, this patient presented with scissors. You can see there is a patchy restricted diffusion area in the right preventricular deviate matter in the subcortical white matter of right frontal lobe. There are multiple tiny cystic lucencies which are hyper intense on T2. They are not suppressed on flare. flare. Uh, here also you can see there are multiple clusters of tiny cystic lucencies. There is no significant enhancement on IV contrast and sometimes choline peaks can be seen. So whenever you see multiple tiny cystic bubbly lucencies which are hyper intense on T2, not suppressed on flare, predominantly seen in subcortical white matter, one of the common differential you can consider are 
multinodular and vacuolating neuronal tumors. This is called MVNT. So what is this MVNT? MVNT is a rare uh, tumor uh, which presents as bubbly indolent subcortical tumors. Its, it's common location is temporal lobe. Sometimes it may present in cerebellum. If it presents in cerebellum, it is called MVNT plus. Huh? And these are considered as one of the glioneuronal neuronal tumors in current 2021 WHO classification. CT they may present as low attenuation lesions in the subcortical white matter. Whereas MR we have already seen the differential uh, imaging features. Differential diagnosis can be DNET. DNET mostly appears as a cortical tumor rather than subcortical tumor. Often has a bright flare rim sign. Other differentials can be focal cortical dysplasia, prominent VR spaces or which Robin spaces, ganglioscytoma and encephalomalacia and gliosis. So whenever you see multiple tiny cystic bubbly lucencies on T2 in the subcortical white matter, not suppressed on flare, definitely suspect MVNT as one of the differential diagnoses. Next case, you can see uh, this patient was a known case of a brain tumor which was operated uh, brain tumor which was irradiated previously so now the patient presented with uh, scissors you can see there is a diffuse uh, subcortical uh, even uh, gyriform enhancement noted in the right temporoparietal lobes so gyriform enhancement noted in the right temporoparietal lobes so whenever you have a history of primary tumors with residual or recurrent tumors with previous irradiation presenting with uh, prominent gyral enhancement with mass effect as cortical thickening definitely suspect stroke like migraine attacks after radiation therapy which is called smart syndrome so typically there will be history of uh, uh, clinical irradiation uh, with no or re no residual recurrent tumor prolonged symptoms uh, referable to unilateral cortical area which is irradiated and uh, differential diagnosis can be non-convergent stratalized septiplicus or repeated focal scissors and even other differentials by imaging can be subacute cerebral infarction or post reversible encephalopathy syndrome so remember uh, smart syndrome next case this was uh, this case you can see there is diffuse colonic wall thickening so the, there is thickening of the colonic wall and there is multiple uh, calcified areas noted in the mesenteric veins here you can see there is calcified areas in the mesenteric veins extending into the intramural branches so whenever you see colonic wall thickening with mesenteric veins calcification definitely suspect idiopathic mesenteric pleurosclerosis so which is called imp so herbal supplements as can be given as a potential cause for this and uh, right half of the hemicolon can be involved sometimes pan colon can be involved and sometimes they may present with bowel obstruction so bowel wall thickening with multiple calcifications in the mesenteric veins one of the differential you can consider is idiopathic mesenteric pleurosclerosis next case this was a case of a primary lung cancer now presenting with pain in the femur in the lower limb you can see there is diffuse periosteal uh, thickening uh, there is bilateral periosteal thickening in the metadiaphyseal region of the femur so whenever you present we see these type of features in the previous issue of lung cancer definitely suspects hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy so there can be periosteal thickening or periosteitis nuclear medicine can present with uh, increased lean resistance uptake and present as tram track sign other differential can be periosteitis, chronic venous insufficiency, thyroid acropachy, hypervitaminosis A and vericonazole induced periosteitis. So we will try to see all the cases summing up in the slide. Uh, so whenever you see uh, paraseptal emphysematous changes, uh, a paraseptal emphysematous changes or emphysematous changes in the upper lobes with UIP pattern in the lower lobes, suspect combined pulmonary fibrosis with emphysema. So next, whenever you see well-defined uh, lesion in the subcutaneous plane, not infiltrating into the deep muscle tissues with feeding veins, definitely suspect dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance. Whenever you see placenta thickened with multiple cystic spaces, resemble grape-like vesicles and mimicking molar pregnancy, suspect placental mes mesenchymal dysplasia. And whenever you see uh, multiple tiny cystic lucencies noted in the subcortical white matter, not suppressed on flare, suspect MVNT. Next, whenever you see previous issue of irradiation with prominent gyral enhancement, suspect SMART syndrome. Next, whenever you see uh, diffuse mesenteric vein calcifications with colonic wall thickening, suspect idiopathic mesenteric pleurosclerosis. And previous issue of lung carcinoma with diffuse periosteal reaction, suspect hypertrophic pulmonary osteoarthropathy. So these are the seven uh, unique entities in radiology I want to introduce in this series. Thank you all.